coming to you live with my first ever YouTube premiere, I'm proud to welcome you to the 2019 J-Defense Anime Awards. Now that we're a month into 2020 and I've had a chance to reflect, I wanted to spend some time giving the best 2019 anime the respect they deserve. At the end of the day, I, and I assume all of you, are anime fans at heart, and we genuinely love the medium. Thus, these awards are meant to be a celebration of my absolute favorites of the year. Before jumping into the nominees and winners, I'd like to spend a minute going over the format for these awards. There are a total of 28 split into 5 sections. Genre, character, music, production, and overall. For an anime to be eligible for an award, it had to have aired in 2019 and I had to have watched at least some of it. This does include leftovers from the previous year, but generally excludes currently airing ones unless the current arc is definitively over. Additionally, do note that these awards aren't an attempt at me being objective. They're my awards and thus winners will be what I like the most. For those who aren't watching live, I'll include timestamps of each award's nominees and winners in the description and comments so you can just jump to whatever you're interested in. Now, with that bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's jump into the first section, Genre Awards. And what better way to kick off this section than with Best Action? 2019 certainly brought it when it came to this genre, with many incredibly animated fight scenes, massive set pieces, and examples of dynamic animation. Here are the six anime that I felt did it best, and my nominees for Best Action. Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, Dororo, Fire Force, Mob Psycho 102, Sword Art Online Alization, and the winner for Best Action is Mob Psycho 102. The first season already had its share of impressive action, but this season turned everything up to 11. The action sequences are incredibly dynamic with constant movement that never manages to get overwhelming despite how much is happening. The scale of some of the fights is massive, and whether they incorporate a couple or a dozen participants, each fight is hype as hell. And what's also nice is that the action never feels forced, characters don't fight just to fight, and the action doesn't feel like it's there for the sake of just being there. Every fight has a purpose and in-universe implications, and that makes each one even more intense to watch. But as much as I enjoy crazy fight scenes, well-written comedy, and edge-of-your-seat thrillers, I don't know if I'd say there's a genre I genuinely enjoy more than that of a good adventure. Being pulled into new worlds, exploring uncharted territory, and meeting a huge cast of characters just has a certain magic to it that I absolutely love. And with that, I'm happy to bring you the nominees for Best Adventure or Fantasy. Astra Lost in Space Cautious Hero Dr. Stone the Rising of the Shield Hero. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Vinland Saga. And the winner for Best Adventure or Fantasy is... Astra Lost in Space. Astra is an adventure in every sense of the word, taking place in the vast unknown that is space. As we follow our cast as they travel from planet to planet in their journey back home, facing new challenges and developing all throughout it, I found myself as excited and anxious as they were with each new planet they stepped foot on, and mystery they unraveled. It's an adventure on the grandest of scales and one that I loved watching. The nature of animation lends itself particularly well to comedy, making it a medium with more possibilities than a live action one thanks to the way that animators can make characters react to things. Regardless of whether it's an isekai, rom-com, or slice of life setting, anime comedies often have the ability to make me laugh so hard I have to pause the show to recover, and they've given me a gold mine of reaction images and out of context one-liners. Without further ado, here are the nominees for Best Comedy or Slice of Life. Cautious Hero How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? Isekai Quartet Kaguya-sama Love is War Magical Senpai Orisuki, Are You the Only One Who Loves Me? And the winner for Best Comedy or Slice of Life is... Kaguya-sama Love is War Anime rom-coms are a dime a dozen, but Love is War set itself apart early on with its unique and hilarious setup. Watching Kaguya and Shiragane try to get each other to admit they're in love via mind games, competitions, and other tricks set up a solid base, and the expressive animation, voice actors' delivery, and heartwarming underlying story built it up to be a comedic tour de force. Drama is a genre that I often avoided when I was growing up, as I considered it boring when compared to crazy action or great comedy. But over the years, I've come to realize that drama is the genre that champions what I love most about any kind of entertainment medium. A well-told story and engaging character development. The twists and turns, challenges, and ongoing development often have the potential to lead to emotional payoffs and satisfying conclusions, and dramas tend to be the stories that stick with me the longest. Here are the nominees for Best Drama. 
Attack on Titan. Beastars. Given. Kono Oto Tamare Sounds of Life. The Promised Neverland. Vinland Saga. And the winner for Best Drama is... Vinland Saga. Studio Wit absolutely knocked it out of the park with Vinland Saga, a Viking story that's epic in every way. What starts off as a revenge story gradually develops into a political drama where every faction has characters that I found incredibly engaging. The dialogue was well written, the cast is full of interesting characters, the antagonist is one of the best in recent memory, the story kept me glued to my seat, and the conclusion to it all left me speechless. If you enjoy a good drama, you'd be doing yourself a disservice to not watch this. Rivaling my love for adventure is that of my love for mystery and thrillers. The darker, more mature themes they tend to incorporate make for interesting stories that keep me theorizing, crazy plot twists that catch me off guard, and scenes that put me on the edge of my seat. From tense survival stories to hard-boiled sci-fi detective thrillers, no character is ever safe and I love the way they keep me guessing. Here are the nominees for Best Mystery or Thriller. Astra Lost in Space Babylon Boogie Pop and Others Granbelm The Promised Neverland Psycho Pass 3 And the winner for Best Mystery or Thriller is... The Promised Neverland This was one of the first anime I watched all year and it had one of the most intense debut episodes I've ever seen. I could practically feel the desperation the cast had in this thrilling survival story, with some surprises I didn't see coming, and a suffocating aura that perfectly complemented the confined setting the characters found themselves in. The Promised Neverland pulls no punches in its story, and that combined with the strong voice acting and impressive directing resulted in an anime that was captivating from beginning to end. And to wrap up the genre section, we have Romance. I feel like Romance is one of the more contentious in anime, as they often don't get the conclusions they deserve and result in many debates that tend to get heated over one of the most important questions known to mankind. Who is Best Girl? That being said, a well-told romance with likable leads is one that also tends to captivate the community, has the potential to tell an emotional story with huge payoffs, and allows us to live vicariously through the characters and cheer whenever progress is made. Here are the nominees for Best Romance. Given Kaguya-sama Love is War Kono Oto Tamare Sounds of Life Orisuki, Are You the Only One Who Loves Me? The Quintessential Quintuplets. We Never Learn. And the winner for Best Romance is... Given. I was initially drawn to Given because I love music, and I enjoy seeing that be a main part of the story in some way. So imagine my surprise when I found out that Given was actually a romance, and one that I felt could even beat out a juggernaut like Love is War at that. The way Mafiyu and Ritsuka's relationship develops across the runtime of the show, and came to an emotionally charged and worthwhile payoff, was charming and I even thought that the side ship of Haruki and Akihito could stand on its own as one of the best of the year. As the characters grow closer to each other via their experience in the band, and themes such as accepting your past, looking towards the future, and struggling with your sexuality are all explored, I found myself thinking that the way Given handled its romance was easily the best of the year. And with that, we move on to our next section of awards, characters. Along with the story, characters are one of the most important aspects of anime to me and movies and games while we're at it. Engaging character development, likable protagonists, well-written antagonists, and strong ensemble casts will always be factors that have the potential to elevate an anime to the next level for me. And of course, that begs the question, who were the best of the year? Let's find out. We'll kick this section off with best protagonist. As they're the character we'll be following throughout most if not all of the story's runtime, it's of utmost importance that they be likable, a strong anti-hero, or just otherwise fun to watch as they develop and carry us to the end. I particularly like characters that I'm able to empathize with, or who can convince me to support them in whatever their goal is in the show. Here are the characters who I thought managed that best, and the nominees for Best Protagonist. Emma from The Promised Neverland. Legosi from Beastars. Mob from Mob Psycho 102. Rimuru from That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Seizaki Zen from Babylon. Senku from Dr. Stone. And the winner for Best Protagonist is. Mob from Mob Psycho 102. If I'm being completely honest with you all, I can't say that I really cared about the first season of Mob Psycho, or even for Mob himself. But that all changed with the second season, which. 
as far as I'm concerned, was a massive improvement in every way. Mob's development, as he comes to terms with his powers and the positive ways he can use them, begins to feel confident in himself, and strives towards his overall goal of improving himself, was a journey I could empathize with in numerous ways and love to watch. But a protagonist wouldn't be complete without somebody to stand in their way and challenge their beliefs at every turn. A strong antagonist isn't just someone to hate or who exists solely to play the villain role. They're characters with their own motives and goals, and like protagonists can make you think or even empathize with them at times. Here are the nominees for Best Antagonist. Askeladd from Vinland Saga. Isabella from The Promised Neverland. Magase I from Babylon. Overhaul from My Hero Academia Season 4. Quinella from Sword Art Online Alisation. Zeke from Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. And the winner for Best Antagonist is... Askeladd from Vinland Saga. I don't even know where to begin with Askeladd. He's not just an antagonist to me. He's the most compelling character in all of Vinland Saga. At times a brutal killer, and at other times a borderline empathetic father figure, Askeladd is a complex character with many layers to peel back. But as each one is shed and we get a look at his true motives and backstory, I found myself realizing I was seeing something special. An antagonist who made me empathize with him more than any other character, who truly made me see his side and understand his goals. Who dare I say even made me root for him at points. Askeladd isn't just my antagonist of the year. He's one of the best antagonists I've had the pleasure of watching, and now firmly holds a place as one of my favorite characters of all time. While protagonists and antagonists are vital parts of any show, that doesn't mean that the overall cast is any less important than they are. From love interests to comic relief, best friends to best fur ends, clubmates to family, and rivals to villains, a varied and interesting cast fleshes out the story and character interactions in interesting and meaningful ways be it because they support the main character, fundamentally oppose them, or because they're just fun to watch, a good cast will leave a lasting impression. Here are the nominees for Best Cast. Astra Lost in Space Dr. Stone Kaguya-sama Love is War That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Vinland Saga We Never Learn And the winner for Best Cast is... That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime I absolutely adore the cast in this anime. Being a fantasy world, Slime touts one of the most varied casts that I've ever seen. We've got our gelatinous blob protagonist, goblins, wolves, orcs, ogres, demons, humans, dwarves, lizard people, dryads, fairies, and even a tsundere dragon. I mean, come on! That time I got reincarnated as a slime is an anime that constantly made me smile and emphasized everything that makes me love anime as a medium, and how enjoyable the cast was played a huge role in that. In fact, I don't think there was a single character that I disliked. Whew. Now that we've gotten the serious categories out of the way, it's time to delve into the ones that every anime fan has gotten into at least a couple arguments over. The ones that entire contests with tens of thousands of votes are based on. That's right. It's finally time for the coveted Best Girl, Best Guy, and Best Couple or Ship Awards. It's hard to define what exactly makes a Best Girl. Is it because they're a well-written character? Is it because they're likable? Is it just because they're cute? I don't know, but deep down we're all on a similar wavelength when it comes to this topic. I mean, can you really call yourself an anime fan if you haven't gotten triggered at some random online criticizing your Best Girl? I nearly ended a friendship with one of my roommates after he insulted mine a few times too many, so... Anyway, that's beside the point. 2019 brought some great options to the plate, so here are the nominees for Best Girl. Arie Spring from Astra Lost in Space Kaguya Shinomiya from Kaguya-sama Love is War Miku Nakano from the Quintessential Quintuplets Raftalia from The Rising of the Shield Hero Sakura Hibiki from How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, Takemoto Uruka from We Never Learn, and the winner of Best Girl is... Takemoto Uruka from We Never Learn. Kaguya put up a very tough fight, but in the end there was no one I enjoyed watching as much as Takemoto. From her cheerful and upbeat personality to her top tier blushes, she constantly had me smiling whenever she was on screen, and I loved her gradual development throughout the show. In fact, I enjoyed her so much that as soon as the show finished airing, I actually found her catapulting herself into my top 10 favorites of all time. On the opposite side of the coin from Best Girl is the less contested but still debated topic of Best Guy. 
like best girl, it's hard to define just what criteria make up a best guy, as it varies wildly for everyone. For me, it generally comes down to who I most enjoyed watching, or who I found the funniest or most likable. Here are the nominees for best guy. Chika Kudo from Kono Oto Tamare, Sounds of Life. Haruki Nakayama from Gibbon. Kanada Hoshijima from Astra Lost in Space. Miyuki Shirogane from Kaguya-sama Love is War. Mob from Mob Psycho 102. Roddy from Carol and Tuesday. And the winner of Best Guy is... Haruki Nakayama from Given. Given was a late entrant to these awards as I only just finished it a week ago, but Haruki immediately shot up my list to take the number one spot. Throughout the show, he often acts as the voice of reason to the rest of the cast, helping them keep their heads when things get heated, or offering advice when people found themselves in tough spots. He seems like an all-around genuinely great guy and one I'd love to have as a friend. And for the final category of the character section, we have that of best couple or ship. Anyone who watches rom-coms, or even shows with any kind of hint of romance, be it actual or just undertones, has without a doubt picked some ships that they want to see play out. As a devout member of the Nino gang, I know I have. Be it because they're the pair I most want to see play out in a harem, because they're the main couple, or just because I think they would be, or actually are, cute together, here are the nominees for best couple or ship. Haruki and Akihito from Given. Kaguya and Shirogane from Kaguya-sama Love is War. Kurusu and Kurata from Kono Oto Tamari Sounds of Life. Mafuyu and Ritsuka from Given. Miku and Futuro from the Quintessential Quintuplets. Takemoto and Narayuki from We Never Learn. And the winner of Best Couple or Ship is... Kaguya and Shirogane from Kaguya-sama Love is War. They may have both come a spot short in Best Guy and Best Girl, but I can without a doubt say there is no ship I wanted to sail more than these two. They're hopelessly in love with each other from the start, but both too proud to admit it first. It's one of those ships where they're perfect for each other, and where you know it's going to happen eventually. It's just a question of when. So with every bit of progress and cute scene that happened between them, I got more and more hyped for how satisfying that inevitable conclusion would be. From their cute rapport to the little ways they show their love for each other, Kaguya and Shirogane easily take the top spot for this category. Anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love music. I've been to many dozens of concerts, own hundreds of CDs, and basically always have music playing in the background no matter what I'm doing. So this next section, music, is very near and dear to me. Let's kick off the music section the same way that every anime kicks itself off, with openings. Getting to watch all of the new openings each season brings is one of my favorite parts of the first week of every new season, and 2019 had a lot of good openings. And though this is placed in the music category, when it comes to OPs, the visuals are just as important. Let's take a look at the nominees for best opening. Crying for Rain by Minami from Domestic Girlfriend. Kayen by Ziyuvachi from Dororo. Love Dramatic by Masayuki Suzuki featuring Rika Ihara from Kaguya-sama Love is War. Onigai Muscle by Hibiki and Machio from How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift. Touch Off by Overworld from The Promised Neverland. Wa Moon Das Cry by Baka, Ota, and Robo from Wasteful Days of High School Girls. And the winner of Best Opening is... Kayan from Dororo. Kayan is the full package when it comes to anime OPs. The song has catchy vocals that are somehow both upbeat and chilling at the same time, which fit the tone of the show really well. The visuals are sharp and expressive, with the shot of Hyakimaru fighting and the reflection of the blade being one of my favorites of the year. Oh, and there's a great bass drop. As I just mentioned, when it comes to OPs, the song, visuals, and the way they work together are all equally important, and Dororo checks all of those boxes with ease. Following that up, we have the award for Best Soundtrack. Be it epic action sequences, an emotional climax, or your chill slice of life moments, music has the ability to make every scene hit harder and make you feel the emotions the composer wants. Here are the nominees for Best Soundtrack. Attack on Titan. Boogie Pop and Others. Demon Slayer. Granbelm. Sword Art Online Alisation. Vinland Saga. And the winner of Best Soundtrack is... Boogie Pop and Others. I feel like this anime, and as a result its brilliant soundtrack, really flew under the radar this year, which is a huge bummer. 
the heavy usage of electronic components is expertly used to help emphasize the unsettling and mysterious tone that the anime sets. And despite generally having a slower vibe to it, a few songs kick in fast and hard when needed for the big climaxes. It was my favorite part of the show, and is absolutely worth a listen if you at all care about or enjoy music. But let's take it a step further with this next category, the single best OST track. Something that I really love about music is the way it's able to work with what's happening on screen to heighten whatever emotion it wishes to elicit. From a villain's unsettling theme making me uncomfortable, to an action theme making the insanity on screen even more hype, to a somber and touching song emphasizing the sadness or regret a character is feeling, music can do it all. So without further ado, here are some of the most memorable and powerful tracks from this year, and my nominees for Best OST Track. A Given from Babylon Boogie Pop Overdrive, The King of Distortion, from Boogie Pop and Others. End of the Prologue, from Vinland Saga. Isabella's Lullaby, from The Promised Neverland. To Destroy the Evil, from Demon Slayer. Wish of the Doll, from Grambell. And the winner of Best OST Track is... Wish of the Doll, from Grambell. Grambell, like Boogie Pop, is another anime with a criminally underrated soundtrack and this song was one of the best off of it, being used during one of the most intense scenes in the show. Sitting at 7.5 minutes long, there's a 5 minute build up from strings before a somber transition on the piano, climaxing with eerie vocals from a choir which sound full of sadness. This is a great piece of music on its own, but its usage in the show elevated both the song and scene to new heights, and that's what makes it such a fantastic track. Now, soundtracks are all fine and dandy, but another element of music that I absolutely love in anime is that of insert songs. Used more sparingly than a general track from a soundtrack, they're often reserved for the biggest scenes of the show, and that makes them incredibly impactful and memorable. Here are the nominees for best use of inserts. Astra Lost in Space Bang Dream Season 2 Beastars Carol and Tuesday Dr. Stone, Fairy Gone, and the winner of Best Use of Inserts is Carol and Tuesday. This should come as no surprise to anybody who's watched the show. Carol and Tuesday revolves around musicians and the music industry, and it features one of the most varied, ambitious soundtracks in anime, and that soundtrack is highlighted by the dozens of insert songs. Ranging from pop to indie, from rap to EDM, Carol and Tuesday basically had it all, and so many of those songs were fantastic, both musically and in the way they were used in their scenes. Even now, five months after the show has finished airing, I still often find myself going back to listen to the songs. Be it guerrilla street performances, a competition a la American Idol, recording albums, doing live shows, or a once in a lifetime event, the insert usage in Carolyn Tuesday is as good as it gets. I'd also like to take it a step further with insert songs. The single best insert song. Like with songs from soundtracks, insert songs have the ability to emphasize the emotional aspect of the scenes they're in, but unlike soundtracks, insert songs tend to have lyrics that can be applied to the scene in question, adding another layer to what was already intended to be a powerful scene. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think there's anything that has the potential to hit me harder than an emotional vocal performance from a well-timed insert song. Similar to how I treated the best OST track category, this category will also include not just the song itself, but how the song was used in that scene. Here are the nominees for Best Insert Song. Mother from Carol and Tuesday. One Small Step from Dr. Stone. Over the Rainbow from Sword Art Online Alisation. Returns from Bang Dream Season 2. Tanjiro Kamado's Song from Demon Slayer. Winter Story from Given. And the winner of Best Insert Song is... Returns from Bang Dream Season 2. This was probably one of the hardest choices I made for any category in these awards, as I felt like all six of these songs, aside from being great songs in general, had a very powerful impact in their respective scenes. But in the end, it was Returns that I felt had the strongest impact. Written by one of the band members in Pop and Party in the midst of what was building up to be the band breaking up, she pours her heart into the lyrics to express what the band means to her and how she doesn't want them to split up. The scene it debuted in is heart-wrenching and left a huge impression on me, instantly becoming one of my favorite Bang Dream songs. And then to put the cherry on top, after the band revises it together, they add a single line to the end of it. Thank you 
a song that makes my heart tremble with joy, returns. The line symbolizes what the song means to them, and every time I see it, it chokes me up. And now, much like how we started the music category with openings, I'd like to wrap it up the same way episodes of anime do, with the best ending. Unlike openings, I don't think endings get the respect they deserve. Sure, some of them are lazy and just have a song playing over some static images in the credits, but there are also some that feature really creative visuals and songs that have a neat tie into the show. These deserve to be recognized, so here are the nominees for Best Ending. Allegria by D Selections from Kakiguri Season 2. Name of Love by Cinema Staff from Attack on Titan. Stand By Me by The Peggies from Sara Zanmai. Torches by Ame from Vinland Saga. We're in the Box by Aiki from Stars Align. While I'm Next to You by Chiai Fujikawa from The Rising of the Shield Hero. And the winner of Best Ending is... Allegria from Kakiguri Season 2. The first season of Kakiguri has one of my all-time favorite endings, so I had really high expectations for the second seasons, and I'm happy to say that it didn't disappoint. The song is an absolute banger, boasting a ridiculously catchy chorus and impressive vocals. The art features some of the things Kakiguri is well known for, the crazy eyes and erotic imagery. And then the chorus has a callback to the first season's walk animation, featuring Yumeko walking confidently, all while some crazy visuals with nice colors go on in the background. I swear it didn't win just because of the tights, okay? And with that, we move on to our fourth section, production. Or as I like to think of it, the visuals and audio. I already covered most of the audio components in the music section, so while production will include voice acting, the focus here will be on the visuals. So let's start it off with the category that serves as the foundation of every anime's visuals, background art. Be it an intricately designed piece of architecture, detailed nature, or nice usage of color, art is an important piece of the visual puzzle that adds depth and character to the world being depicted. Here are the nominees for best art. Attack on Titan. Carol and Tuesday, Demon Slayer, Fire Force, Null and Pita, Finland Saga. And the winner of Best Art is... Finland Saga. If I had to sum up Finland Saga's art in one word, it would be breathtaking. From the roaring waves of the sea to the mountainous terrain of Wales, from snow-capped villages to usage of natural light, Studio Wit put their all into the art of Finland Saga and it shows. The art did a fantastic job of really driving home the natural beauty of the land, and the gorgeous setting made this adventure one well worth embarking on. Going hand in hand with background art is character design. Be it because of taking a more realistic skew, incorporating a more unique style, or just making them really cute, character designers have the ability to make characters more memorable and stand out in a medium that often relies on basic and repetitive designs to get the job done. Here are the nominees for Best Character Design. Carol and Tuesday. Demon Slayer. Fire Force. How heavy are the dumbbells you lift? That time I got reincarnated as a slime. We never learn. And the winner of best character design is... That time I got reincarnated as a slime. It almost feels fitting that my winner for best cast would also win best character design, as one of the reasons I enjoyed the cast so much was because of their designs. Being a fantasy world, the amount of races represented is massive, and that's reflected in those designs. They use bright, attractive colors that make each character pop, the eyes are nice, and I love the clothing style. It's everything that I could have asked for from the characters in a fantasy anime. Tying the knot on the art and designs is the category that makes so many anime fans love anime. The animation. Whether it's jaw-dropping set pieces or subtle character animations, the way the animation is handled has a way to draw a viewer in like no other. Here are the nominees for Best Animation. Attack on Titan. Demon Slayer. Fire Force. Grand Belm. Mob Cycle 102. Sword Art Online Alistation. And the winner of Best Animation is... Mob Cycle 102. Bones absolutely flexed on all of us with the animation in Mob Psycho this year. The action scenes are some of the best of the year, with a constant sense of movement as characters, weapons, and debris alike fly throughout the scene. The use of colors is fantastic, the sense of scale is unparalleled, the style pops off the screen, and it all comes together to make one of the most visually engaging TV anime I've seen in a while. But production isn't just about the visuals. 
It's also about the acting and the way those voice actors bring the characters to life. Good voice acting has the ability to make the characters and their feelings more believable, to resonate with us emotionally, and to add nuance to the meaning of dialogue and scenes. Voice acting is a difficult job, but one that has a huge impact on the end product. Here are the nominees for Best Male Voice Acting Performance. Chikihiro Kobayashi as Lugosi from Beastars. Daiki Yamashita as Joro from Orisuki. Makoto Furukawa as Shirogane from Kaguya-sama Love is War. Naoya Uchida as Askeladd from Vinland Saga. Takahiro Sakurai as Reagan from Mob Psycho 100. Yuki Kaji as Eren from Attack on Titan. And the winner of Best Male Voice Acting Performance is Makoto Furukawa as Shirogane from Kaguya Sama Love is War. Furukawa had a tough role to fill as Shirogane is one of the most popular characters in a rom com out right now, but he did a fantastic job in this role. Regardless of what the scene called for, he delivered. Be it the loud and in your face comedy, the touching emotional moments, the tsundere reactions, or the devious schemes he plots, Furukawa nailed all of them. And following that up, we have The Woman. Here are the nominees for Best Female Voice Acting Performance. Ai Faro as Sakura Hibiki from How Heavier the Dumbbells You Lift. Aki Toyosaki as Restarte from Cautious Hero. Aoi Koga as Kaguya Shinomiya from Kaguya Sama Love is War. Aoi Yuki as Suisho Hakamada from Granbum. Sayori Hayami as Jabami Yumiko from Kakiguri. Satsuki Yukino as Magusei Ai from Babylon. And the winner of Best Female Voice Acting Performance is Satsuki Yukino as Magusei Ai from Babylon. I talked a bit about her already in my video on Babylon, so I'll just reiterate a few of my points from there. Yukino brings in the psychotic edge that you'd expect from a character like Magusei. Her voice acts as a double-edged sword, at times sweet and seductive, encouraging strangers to do her bidding, and at other times passionate and unhinged, taunting the cast as she continues to stay one step ahead of them. Her voice practically drips malice as she torments our protagonist, and even just as a viewer, the emotion that Yukino managed to bring into Magase's character makes me feel uneasy whenever she appears on screen. This is an absolutely phenomenal performance through and through. Alright, and with that, we finally reached our last section of awards. Overall. To start things off, we'll finally tackle the part of anime that I enjoy most. The story. A good story captivates me like nothing else, pulling me along all of its twists and turns, and immersing me in its world before hitting me with a powerful and satisfying conclusion. It may deal with interesting themes, have a well-written cast, be full of plot twists, or tug at the heartstrings. To me, story is king. And here are the nominees for Best Story. Astra Lost in Space. Attack on Titan. Grand Belm. The Promised Neverland. Sword Art Online Alisation. Finland Saga. And the winner of Best Story is... Attack on Titan. Throughout its first season, Attack on Titan crafted an action-packed thriller. Taking place in a brutal world, it took no prisoners as it barreled ahead into Season 2, which continued to ramp up the intensity of the action, but also added in some mystery and plot twists to the mix. In the first half of Season 3, it took a turn to more of a political drama, with a great antagonist and some questions about the world finally being addressed. But the second half of Season 3 far surpassed any of those blowing the door wide open by finally answering questions that we've had since the series debuted in 2013. The revelations we got and direction the story took caught me completely off guard and resulted in some of the most intense, entertaining episodes of the year. There is no story that captivated, surprised, or satisfied me as much as Attack on Titans, and for that reason there's no sequel I'm looking forward to more than this one. 
Inevitably, every year brings a handful of blockbusters like Attack on Titan to the forefront of the community, enthralling us and becoming a catalyst for conversation. But because of the massive popularity these attain, there are always a number of anime that fly under the radar. These are the anime that deserve more attention or love, and the ones that I wished more people would check out. Here are the nominees for Most Underrated or Underwatched. Didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? Grand Belm. Kono Oto Tomare Sounds of Life. Magical Senpai. The Ones Within. Radiant. And the winner of Most Underrated or Underwatched is... Grand Belm. I think a lot of people saw Grand Belm and initially just wrote it off as just another dark magical girl anime. But in reality, it's so much more than that. The story is intense and deals with some tough topics, all culminating in a genuinely emotional and impressive conclusion. The characters are varied, likable, and well-written, with many being ones I found myself able to empathize with. The soundtrack is one of the best of the year, containing some heart-pounding action themes and heart-wrenching emotional tracks. The action features fully 2D animated mech fights so good that it only just missed out on a nomination for best action. And the directing is on point, establishing an eerie, tense, and mysterious tone that never lets up. I really, really wish that more people checked this out. And with that, we finally reached them. The Big Three. Best Episode, Best Sequel, and the Vaunted Anime of the Year. Best Episode is, of course, entirely subjective. To me, the episode deserving of the title of Best Episode is one that made me think, hit me hard emotionally, progressed the story or characters in meaningful ways, had some kind of incredible set piece or sequence, or otherwise left me speechless. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe it's not that deep and it was just an absolute blast to watch. Let's find out. And don't worry, this won't contain spoilers. Here are the nominees for Best Episode. Attack on Titan Episode 54 Hero Babylon Episode 7 The Most Evil Demon Slayer Episode 19 Hinokami Doctor Stone Episode 17 A Hundred Nights and a Thousand Skies Food Wars Episode 72 Song of Hope Vinland Saga Episode 18 Out of the Cradle And the winner of Best Episode is... Attack on Titan Episode 54 Hero Hero is everything that's great about Attack on Titan wrapped up in a single 20 minute block. It touts one of the single best action scenes in all of Attack on Titan, has incredibly high stakes for every character, and left me unable to believe what I'd just seen when the end credits rolled. It was the perfect balance between being hype as hell and absolutely obliterating my heart, and I don't think there was a single episode this year that could match the impact it had on me, especially as someone who's been following the series for 5 years now. If there's one thing that anime fans will unanimously agree on, it's that we don't get enough sequels. While Hollywood and other western media tend to pump sequels out faster than we can count, anime tends to focus on newer series rather than established ones. But in the past couple years, the landscape has changed. We're seeing more sequels than ever before as the industry and executives finally see the value in capitalizing on both popular well-known giants and in reviving smaller fan-favorite series. Be it because of the story developments or enjoyment value, these are the sequels I found myself most enamored by. Here are the nominees for Best Sequel or Spin-Off. Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2 Bang Dream Season 2 Food Wars The Fourth Plate Isekai Quartet Mob Psycho 102 Sword Art Online Alicization And the winner of Best Sequel or Spin-Off is... Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2 This probably comes as the least surprising pick of these awards considering how much I've been nominating it for, but this season of Attack on Titan was far and away its best season yet. The story is the most intense it's ever been, with some huge payoffs and questions finally being answered. The action is still ridiculously high quality, and the incredible soundtrack from Hiroyuki Sawano elevates it as always. But it was the story that really set this season apart from the pack, with the voice actors, especially Yuki Kaji as Eren and Daisuke Ono as Erwin, bringing their all for every major scene. I feel genuinely lucky to have been able to watch these episodes live and take part in the hype. And here we are, the final award, Anime of the Year. We had some strong anime this year, but there were a few that stood above the rest. Anime of the Year is an award for a truly special anime, 
one that I can see taking a top spot in my favorites list and sticking with me for a long time to come. It's an example of the perfect storm of all of the previous sections, characters, music, and production. It's an anime that I genuinely love. So without further ado, let's find out what anime took it all home. Here are the nominees for Anime of the Year. And the winner of Anime of the Year is... Finland Saga. Where do I even begin? Finland Saga is incredible. It's a dark, mature story that I thoroughly loved every moment of, and one that takes full advantage of both the brutal action and political drama the time period has. The cast is well written, making me sympathize with characters from every faction, both good and evil. Supporting characters like Tors, Canute, Thorkel, and Bjorn kept me engaged, but it was thanks to one man that Vinland Saga truly stood head and shoulders above the rest. Askeladd. He is, without a doubt, my favorite antagonist in anime. Askeladd is complex, and despite the atrocities that he commits throughout the show, I couldn't help but empathize with him. He's compelling, well-written, and the driving force behind the story. His character development and impact on the rest of the cast is some of the best that I've ever seen, and he immediately took a place in my favorite characters of all time. And that doesn't even begin to touch on the beautiful art and animation from Studio Wit or the phenomenal soundtrack from Yutaka Yamada. I feel lucky to have experienced this work of art. Upon finishing Vinland Saga, I didn't even need time to think. I gave it a 10 out of 10. And with that, the 2019 J-Defense Anime Awards officially come to a close. I truly genuinely love anime. It's a magical medium full of possibilities, and one that I've been enamored with ever since I first started watching over five years ago. YouTube is a way for me to express that passion, and I hope that you were able to identify with me and my favorites throughout this award show. If you made it this far, I just want to say thank you. This has been my biggest production yet, and I'm really nervous about how it'll go over, so if you enjoyed it, please let me know. And now that I've done my part and put my favorites out there, I'd love to know if you agreed with my picks and what your favorites were. Please feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments below or on my Twitter at JDefenseAnime. And do subscribe or follow me if you enjoyed this. And as always, thank you so much for watching my video, and until next time.